Damn the hangman hooker, it uh, seems you're getting itchy knuckles again. Just, uh, did anyone bite on that call out? Uh, no one that needed to, I guess. No, nah, so I, yeah. Well, it's just with Israel's card got announced and um, Brad's fighting through Dover on that card. That's an awesome fight. It's an awesome lightweight fight. But then I caught wind that Israel was fighting as well June 12th and that's why Brad was on the card. Um, and that's like a good amount of time. That's like seven and a half weeks from, from when I heard out. So I got in touch with the matchmakers, but uh, nah, they said everyone um, in the rankings is, is kind of either, either hurt or, or already matched. So they're kind of gonna just have to wait and see how those, how those other fights play out. So uh, no interest in Raphael Fazib or Armin Sarukian. They were the only two that I saw um, had any interest. They called me out. Yeah. They called me out. What did, well, uh, what did they, he say? They asked for the fight pretty much. Uh, <laughs> I know Fazib said uh, it would be uh, guaranteed 50k. And uh, Sarukian I mean, retweeted it, said something, and then uh, said crickets. I don't, need, I don't need 50k. <laughs> exactly. I'm not, not bragging anything, but, but I don't need 50 k going to change my life. Yeah. Um, and the other one, was that, say it with your chest, son. You know what I mean? If you're gonna shoot, if you're gonna shoot your shot, I think his words were, uh, you're probably gonna say no. But I was like, that's not, how you, that's not how you call someone out. Go back and watch. A couple of my highlights about how you how you say someone's name and how you call someone out. You want to call someone out? Say it with your chest, young man. Don't uh, don't come and uh, say it all shy. If you know what I mean, that's not gonna that's not gonna get you where you want. But um, like in all honesty, I probably couldn't make those fights happen if I wanted to. If if I went to the U or if I went to the UFC and pressed them for those fights, probably still probably still not gonna happen. Probably still. Um, out of my control it's just uh, yeah it's it's how deep the division is it's how hard it is to get to the top 10 of that division and to make a name for yourself um, to go back down you know that far in line is, is pretty crazy yeah. you know for me to say I'm gonna stop doing stupid crap <laughs> I'm like all right now I'm gonna stop doing stupid crap Give me an unranked fighter. Yeah, give me a completely unranked fighter I've never heard of. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not how it's going to happen. So uh, you're obviously not the, the main event opponent for um, Islam. They've said... That well, must be RDA, right? Yeah, it's either RDA or Fowler yeah. if it's not you. It must be RDA. It ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that right now, it ain't me. you uh, disappointed that you won't be the RDA fight? Um, or well, yet anyway? Nah, nah, it's, it's, um, yeah, oh, you know, it would have been awesome to get on that card with Israel, you know, but if something, if something's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Um, more time, more time to stay in the gym, more time to, to be, be pretty prepared. Like, the more time you give me, just the worst it's going to be for whoever's, saying I cried like I've already got a chip on my shoulder about it you know what I mean like I'm already pissed off I'm already I'm already super motivated you just give me more you give me more time to get agitated you give me more time to um, grow that chip it's, it's only gonna it's only gonna get worse for that for that guy I know you're on pretty good terms with Drew Dober. Um, how do you feel about the Brad Riddell Drew Dober fight? Oh, that's yeah, a good fight. Yeah, no, that's a good fight. Um, that's a crazy fight. Mm. <laughs> I was excited when yeah. I first heard that. They're both they're both game, and, and this is what we do at the end of the day. Yeah. But yeah, two guys I know real well. Drew's gonna come come in. Yeah, man, yeah. he's so confident. He comes in so heavy. Comes in so hot. Um, Brad as well with the striking experience. It's gonna be a crazy one. Cause yeah, Drew's the kind of guy that just doesn't care. He just, <laughs> he just doesn't care that you've got 70, 80 kickboxing fights. He's gonna come for you. And he's gonna come in hard and come in hot. But Brad's exactly the same. He's, he's out to make a name for himself. So um, yeah, I'm gonna sit back and enjoy that one. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are like that. Like Brad's been given wrestlers ever since his first fight. Yeah, and yeah, obviously yeah. Drew's just come off the Islam fight. Like I think a lot of people are looking forward to these guys just getting in there and sort of unleashing. 
yeah, yeah, a bit, of, a bit of freedom, if you know what I mean. Like it's not, you're not gonna play it so cautiously, you know, play it so safe. You can just kind of get out there, and, yeah, swing on each other. So it's, uh, it's gonna be a good one to watch. <laughs> When did the new stuff floating in about Israel's rematch with the tour and, uh, in the gym? When did you start hearing about that? Um, not long, not long. It would have been like a week ago when I heard that he was going to be on that card. And just for, like, I just asked Israel, I just said, you fighting, fighting June 12th? And he was confused about the date. He doesn't know what's going on. It's like June 5th, 16th, June 16th. <laughs> He's just like... But he just said whoever, like he said whoever. I knew that they were waiting to see how that Calvin, um, what, that, that fight hadn't happened yet at that point. Um, that I asked him about it. But yeah, he was just like whoever takes it. Like he just didn't, he genuinely did not care. He was just like, it's gonna be either um, Marlon or, or Whitaker, whoever wants to fight. Um, he said, this is the day I'm fighting. I wanna fight quick. Um, who wants a title shot? Right. So a lot of people sort of thought, uh, you know, they'd, they'd wait and, and book that Whitaker rematch. Uh, because he beat Calvin, Vittori just goes and uh, then misses out on the shot. Um, obviously Israel wants to stay stay busy and the girl doesn't want to fight until September and Marvin gets his turn. Yeah, like Rob's still next. Rob's mm -hmm. still next, but it's the it's a champion of the division's cause. Uh, like it's his call. He wants to turn around. He wants to make the fight happen. It's um, it's something the UFC can't deny. You know, you, Israel's going to sell pay-per-views regardless of who he's fighting against. So it's, uh, it's going to be the UFC that wants to see him out there. And just sort of more locally, obviously, you've been uh, around the country the last couple of weeks with, with fighters. Um, Aaron Toe defended his um, bankweight title last week at XFC and Demita and just How's it been that coaching and uh, seeing the guys uh, that you're looking after just keep going from level to level to level? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, yeah, we've been pretty busy every single weekend. I've got a, um, like one weekend off this weekend, but I was sick anyway, which was perfect. <laughs> I was sick in bed this past weekend, so it couldn't happen. That it I'm glad I didn't get that fight, man. <laughs> but um, now nah, it's been cool. Been very cool just watching them um, come up the ranks and achieve what, what they are set out to achieve. You know, you, you set your mind on something, these guys work towards it, um, and the fights are just a reward for all the hard work. Have you started putting feelers out across the ditch for everything now that the um, bubbles opened up and you can maybe get fights over there for, for the guys? Yep, yep. Like for sure, for sure, those kind of fights will happen. Aaron's got another good fight here in New Zealand. You know, Nick, who we've got a 40 second win on the card. He called him out in the cage. That's exactly what you need to do. He got in the cage after his fight and he called him out for the title like that. That gets you the next title shot. So Aaron's fight's next fight is already set. But um, after that, we're going to be flying back to the like, XFC in Australia. So it's, it's going to open the door for a lot of these Kiwi guys. I mean, Kev. Um, he's flying over to Melbourne to fight uh, Eternal in like a week. So, so it's it's really going to open. This is what they needed. And, you know, a lot of these guys, the Kieran Jones, the BJ Bland, they need to get back into Australia to fight. We've got a few questions uh, from the fans on Instagram and Twitter. I guess first one off the top of my head that I remembered is, did you ever find the guy that stole your wallet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like, that would have been a really good story if you had. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of probably for the best. Probably for the best. Yeah. With um, obviously Gilbert Burns is doing what he did at welterweight. I know you've been asked this before, but is welterweight something you look at, or is it just take whatever fights come on the plate? Um, yeah, I don't know why people think I'm so big with that. Like, I don't even. Like I weigh, I weigh both my as a lightweight. I'm, I'm probably one of the, uh, I'm probably one of the leaner lightweight guys that's out there. So it just doesn't make. Like, I can make lightweight like, super comfortable. It's just because I'm tall and I've got a wide frame or something. People think I'm bigger than I am, but uh, 
Would I fight guys at World's Way? Yeah, of course I would. Like, I'd fight anyone if you pay me money to. But, um, it's not, it's not something that makes the most sense. Yeah, understandable. And, uh, just, just on that, is, is there any one opponent in the UFC at the moment that you want to fight? Nah. Nah. Um, anyone. <laughs> Anyone at the UFC will match. Like you can say, you know, all the guys unranked or whatever, calling me out. Like that's if they pay me the kind of money that they pay me to fight you, I would take that. Trust me, I would love to take that fight. But the UFC is not gonna um, make that kind of fight the, with the top ten guy against the unranked opponent. Like you need to just understand that. Um, but yeah, like coming off two losses. Uh, I'm happy to prove myself. I'm happy to take anyone inside of the inside of the rankings and to, to come back and solidify my spot um, before working myself back into a contention for sure. And you have commented in the past about you know fighters' chins. Um, did someone ask you know, just to expand on your thoughts on fighters losing their chin or, or like the chin not really making that much of a difference? Um, that's a very broad question. That's a very, that's a very, question. That's a very broad question. Like some fighters with um, with age or with styles can definitely lose their chin. You find it with guys that like a, like a Chuck Liddell who will go out there and, and like eat a shot to give a shot, and, and so his his style entirely revolves around his ability to take a shot. So he's got like a super aggressive style, but he relies on taking a shot to give a shot. Uh, so then when his chin went and you're relying on your chin to, to get the win, that, that puts you in a tough position. I don't feel like I rely um, solely on my chin. But yeah, people talking about like getting knocked out by Chandler and then getting hit so much in the Fowler and Poirier fights. And, uh, I saw all those punches. So against Paul Felder, against Dustin Poirier, I got hit. There was a lot of clean shots, but I saw them all, which is like a lot of subtle things where you can you can brace your body for impact. The only difference between the, the Chandler punches, I didn't see it. I didn't see the punch. I remember everything I was thinking up until that punch ended. I, I immediately after I can come it up, I remember everything. From, you know, it was like a one second. We, you know, it's such a such a fragmented mistake. But you can see it. You can see it from the weekend. You know, these this is a wild sport. This is like a crazy sport. Everything can happen. I don't doubt. Um, yeah, I don't doubt one for one second that I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll do some pretty incredible things. So. Um, that answer your question. <laughs> yeah. um, I think so. But yeah, like you say, it's it's always that shot that you, you don't see coming. Like, I talked to Shane Cameron um, about it during the week, and he said the exact same thing. Like all the shots you can see coming, obviously you can prepare for, you can try and knock off, but it's the one that sneaks in there that it really catches you off guard. Well, sure, and it's like uh, that that and it's, that had never happened to me. Or it's the same, like same thing Masvidal said on the like that's you know, like 30 pro fights or 50 pro fights it's never it's something that's never happened to me but if you're in this sport you've been doing this sport long enough like, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take a shot from anyone in any division in the UFC with those gloves on I wouldn't take a I wouldn't take a shot on the chin from any single person in the UFC, from the women's strawweight division, none of them. I wouldn't stick my chin in the air and let any of them swing at my chin because they would knock me out. You know that, that that's just a fact. You don't you can't let anyone hit you on the chin um, with, with those gloves on and, and especially at that level that skill set. It's just. Uh, it's just a risky, it's just a risky tank. It's just a, it's just a very dangerous sport. You mentioned Masvidal before, obviously uh, UFC 261 turned into a, we'll call it just a show. Um, there was a lot <laughs> of, 
a lot of surprise on that card. Um, just what did you think watching that card? Obviously, first of all, Jimmy Crook and Chris Weidman. Uh, what what did you make of how those fights ended, and how did you feel watching those live? Oh, just wow, just wow. To be honest, I was sitting there um, after that entire crazy, mad, wild, unpredictable main card, and it gets to the end and it finishes like that. I was, I just turned off my TV and I sat there and I said, what a stupid sport. What a dumb sport. What an absolutely stupid sport. I'm sitting there with my family, I point to them and I say, all of you are sick for watching this on the television. <laughs> Stupid sport, how dare you encourage this kind of madness? I'm I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and I walked off and I left the room because it's just what a crazy what a crazy sport. What a, like what other sport does that does that happen that people just break their legs and get knocked out, legs falling off, bodies hitting the floor all over the shot kicks, punches, the works, and people just carry on like usual, like people just like, yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? <laughs> Your response was kind of the opposite of what I saw all over social media, people going on, oh, this is the best sport in the world, <laughs> where else are you going to find entertainment yeah. like this, like yeah, because Chris they, Weidman going to the hospital yeah, but for surgery. They don't have to do it, exactly. you know what I mean, like, they don't have to, they don't have to roll themselves out there and... <laughs> <laughs> strap those tiny gloves on and do it. I love it. I love it. You know, but I get out there and I get after it and I do it, man. I'm not. <laughs> it's you guys, man. It's you guys. It's you guys. Were there any results on that card that surprised you a little bit? Um. Well, the whole thing's surprising. Like you, that's 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 the sport, and that's what. Um, you run that you run that main card back a hundred a hundred times. You run that main card back a thousand times. You run that main card back ten thousand times. Does that same thing happen? Like ah, that's a that's a that's a crazy night. That's a crazy night. And that's truly like why you it's why it's why this sport has so many fans. Because something that nuts can happen that people can break through. All this kind of wild stuff, but you know, does it happen every single time like that? Oh, oh for sure, for sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I was talking to Janae Harding yesterday, and obviously people have already asked her, like, seeing Chris Weidman's injury, does it make you worry to get back in there? Like, as a fighter, when you see something like that happen, what's your response? Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's like who that's like who you're asking to answer that. It's like Dan Oga the fighter, Dan Oga the coach, because you're gonna get like a completely different answer. And I feel like I feel like coaching has made me a bit more wary of that sort of thing. Like now, now even like like my guys go out there and they. They knock someone out and they're jumping around like idiots and they're like, I don't jump around or, or celebrate anything like that, but I feel I feel sorry for his opponent that's been knocked out. I feel, feel sorry for his team who are over here and they're, they're reeling. So it's not really something, it's not something, like I, I understand and I'll celebrate with my fighter like later on when there's no one around or maybe congratulate him or something like that, but it's not something that I, that I crave or it's not something that I go and hunt anymore. As a fighter, I, I, I love it. You know, as a fighter, I, I want to do I want to do the worst thing possible to my opponent as a fighter. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's like a balancing act. As a fighter, I know that that's a full possibility that something like that can happen. But I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely not afraid for something like that to happen. Like one scratch. Even now, 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 I've been knocked out. That was the last, that truly was the last thing that I was scared of happening in this sport. I've been, I've been choked by the punches. I've been beaten up 
black and blue for if bones broken for 15 minutes. I've been beaten up for 25 minutes. Now I've been like I have done everything. I like everything you could possibly do inside of that cage. Like I genuinely have no no fear of anything happening inside of that cage. Like I've been through it all. Um, it ain't that bad. <laughs> And just finally, um, I know you're not going to be fighting on that June card. Um, did the matchmakers give you any sort of indication of how soon they might be able to get you back? Um, I think they're just going to they're going to wait and see how how these other fights play out. Uh, what is it, like Ferguson, Barry, the title fight? Like how everything um, between me and all of those guys kind of kind of turns and whether I get a See how it plays out. <laughs> I think uh, your guess is as good as mine. Sweet.